All right. So uh, I'm going to talk about value types today uh, and why they are awesome and fast, safe, and correct. Uh, I'll mostly be talking about safe and correct. Fast is an, another talk. Um, warning, I am pretty sick, so I'm kind of out of it. And I may cough a lot. Uh, so pre-warning you. Yeah. All right, so first of all, who am I? I am Nicole Mazuka. I am a trans woman uh, who just interned at VC++ over the summer. Um, I'm a student at Western, and I'm a general C++ nerd. Um, my Twitter handle is at UBSAN, because UB is great. Uh, um, so the first thing we need to talk about when we're talking about value semantics is what actually are value semantics? And people often use this term, but in my experience, people use it without really understanding what's going on. Um, for example, what the heck's a value? Anybody know? What's a value? Like an int. Sure. We're going to talk about platonic ideals of ints, in fact. Um, we're going to talk about what the essence of a value is. The easiest place to start is with the ints, or a subset of the ints, uh, the natural numbers. We've got something like one. We've got something like two. These exist, like, well, okay. We're going to pretend that they exist for the purposes of this talk. We'll get into the platonic uh, debate later. Uh, and they exist outside of C++. Like, C++ did not invent one. Does anyone want to argue otherwise? Uh, and so we kind of, in, in mathematics and in the world, we have these ideas where they're like literal numbers. Like, we, we don't just invent these. We did. I guess we did just invent them. But that's unimportant. Because we're going to talk about C++ next. Because uh, in C++, we have values as well. We have, you know, 1, 2, negative 1, 0 is a very important one. We have no pointer. And these are all kind of uh, examples of translating these platonic ideals of values into literal bits and bytes, or literal on and off switches in your computer. And I don't know about you, but one of my favorite things about C++ is that it's statically typed. And that means that every value in C++ has a type. What's that? I don't know. There are a lot of things that go into a type. But for this specific uh, presentation, what we care about is that a type defines a set of values. So, uh, how do I want to say that? A, a type defines a set of values that belong to that type. They're subsets of an actual platonic ideal. Um, and by the way, I realize I'm going into very mathy uh, wording. If anyone has any questions, please just shout them out. I will answer them. Um, so we have these kind of platonic ideals of, like, say, the integers. And uh, each type that models integers is some, holds some subset of that infinitely large set. So for example, we've got int. Uh, the platonic ideal of integers is the set of natural numbers and the additive, in, in, 
the additive inverses of those numbers. Int specifically, though, is the set negative 2 to the 31 to 2 to the 31 exclusive intersect with the integers. So, so basically, it's the integers from negative 2 to the 31 to, OK, good. I was just making sure that that negative sign was in the right place. Uh, 2, 2, 2 to the 31 on common implementations. We're going to ignore all bad implementations of C++. Uh, <laughs> for example, OK, I actually can't think of any implementations where int is not 32 bytes. You know what? I'm sure it exists. Uh, and so you can see that int, the values of int are a strict subset of the set integer, which are infinite. And obviously, we cannot have infinite things in computers because they are finite spaces. Um, oh, what did I want to say about that? It's like a useful thing about that. Well, anyways. We also must invariably talk about objects. We're going to switch gears a little bit. Um, so we have values. They are some subset of a, uh, of a platonic ideal, uh, the set of values. But in C++, we aren't Haskell. We have mutability. Not everything is a value. We also have places to store values and places to mutate those values. Well, we have places to replace the. An object is a place <laughs> where a value can and usually does live. And we can put a value in an object. And we can replace the value in the object, assuming the object is non-const. Um, so for example, the simplest program, the second simplest program in C++ that you can write is int x equals 0. You create an, an x or an object, and we're going to call it x, where an int lives. And then we're going to put 0 in that storage space. So we're talking a little bit about objects. The fun thing about C++ is that Objects can actually be treated like values. We can here write int x equals 0, int y equals x. And this is exactly equivalent to int x equals 0, int y equals 0, because x is, is 0. So y now has the value of x, which is 0. But going back to mutation, this is, this is all non-mutating. We, we keep all the objects having the same values. Um, probably should have consted them. Uh, you, know, you really want to const all the things uh, to truly bring out the Haskell-y nature of C++. But we can also assign. We can change the value that lives inside an object. For example, int x equals 0, x equals 1. This might seem like kind of obvious, but we'll go a little farther uh, a little later. So x here at the top, right here, has the value 0, and right here has the value 1. Note that assignment is very distinct from initialization. They use the similar syntax. They are not the same thing. Keep that in mind. Um, so some cool things about int. First of all, there are quite a few successes of the interface. Um, we have this concept in C++ where, for example, in Haskell, if you have an int type, there is one int type. In Python, there is one int type. Um, but in C++, we have multiple int types. We have int, we have short, we have car, we have int128. Um, and if you have a value negative 1 in int and a value negative 1 in short, they are equal. Like, they're the same, they model the same platonic ideal of that value. And you can say, return x equals equals y, and it will do the right thing. It will say, yep, yeah, x and y, both negative 1, they're both equal. Unfortunately, we also have unsigned numbers. 
And this sucks, because 255 and negative one are not equal in any sane programming language. They're actually, I just realized, as I'm talking about this, this will also return false uh, for really gross reasons. Uh, X is gonna be uh, widened to int, so it'll be 255 int, and Y will be widened to int, and it'll be negative one int, and that will be false. Imagine I did this with unsigned and int, and worked that out. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so, compar comparison with unsigned is broken in some cases, which is really unfortunate. Uh, I, it's, it's very frustrating. Um, so, unsigned does model the platonic ideal of natural numbers. It's a subset of the integers, and yet max of unsigned is equal to negative one of int. And I don't know about you, but in my math, four billion does not equal negative one. Now let's talk about some more interesting types, like standard string. What is a standard string? A standard string is a list of characters. And the fun thing about lists of characters in C++ is that unlike Java, for example, or unlike, I can't think of it, C sharp, uh, it works exactly the same. So for example, if you write std string x equals hello, and then std string y is equal to x, y is equal to x, y is hello, x is hello, they're both copies of the same value, they both still have the same value. And you can also have fun things like assignment, where you set x equal to hello first, and then you set it to goodbye. And this object just kind of deals with it. And you get comparison and equality on these objects. And in this case, even though they're different objects, X and Y are equal because they represent the same list of characters, the same platonic value ideal. An even cooler thing about C++ is we have other string types, like std string view and car const star. And they both model the same platonic ideal as std string. Now, they don't have the same set of values, to be clear. Std string view, or sorry, car const star models a different set of values than std string. Because std string can have internal nulls. Car const star cannot. However, there's still lists of cares. We can still compare them. There might, be uh, there might be values that are unrepresentable in car const star, but it's still a valid comparison to make. And you get nice things like this, where you allocate once, and then don't allocate the other two times, and you get all three are equal to each other. They work exactly as they should. They all model the same platonic ideal. They all are equal. Side note, sometimes copies are expensive. And so someone, uh, oh, what's his name? Who, who invented moves? Thank you, Howard Hinnant. I feel bad for forgetting that. Uh, Howard Hinnant invented this thing called move semantics where you can steal the guts of some other object. And so, for example, here, we uh, declare a local named x with value hello, and then we return it. And in C++ 03 and C++ 98, uh, the abstract machine would look at this and say, oh, I have an x, which is a standard string, and I need to put it into the return slot of foo, so I need to create a new object that has the value of x. So I'll do a copy, and I'll, I'll allocate new memory, um, 
and it doesn't actually happen that way with std string because of SSO, but I'll allocate new memory, and then I will mem copy the list of cares over, and then I'll deallocate the old one. Um, yeah, that is how that works. <laughs> uh, so, in this case, since C++11, instead of doing the whole allocate new memory, copy the bytes over, drop the old one, and then return, you just move the pointers over. And you, like, so this x after this return statement is basically null, and dropping a null, uh, an empty string doesn't do anything. You can also do some fun things, like creating your own types. So we're gonna talk about writing your own value types. And the cool thing about C++ is it makes it really easy to write your own types uh, that just work with all of these examples. So for example, if you define a person as a pair of a name, which is a standard string, and an age, which is an int, and, uh, this will just work like a value. So, uh, I kinda, see if I can do this. I really like this. If we, Struct person. Boop, boop. We can define a new person really easily. My name is Nicole, and my age is 20. And it just works on all three compilers. And we can do the fun thing where we have person uh, y, I'm gonna copy myself. And it just works. And I can return x dot age. Let's see if we can look at this more prettily. No, you, you cannot get that to be prettier. Anyways, this will return zero. <laughs> Uh, and um, this all just works, and you can even like set a new value for each of these. And so types in C++, <laughs> types in C++ just automatically work like this. And unlike, uh, say, C, for example, you just get these automatic safe defaults. However, there is an issue, which is comparison. If you remember, we ha when we were comparing strings, uh, we had nice things, like if you had hello and you had another hello, they were equal, and if you had hello and goodbye, they're not equal. Um, but this fails to compile with a, uh, like uh, operator equals not found. So in C++20, they added this awesome thing called operator spaceship. And basically, writing this allows you to just automatically be able to uh, operator equals and operator less than and operator greater than and check if I am less than somebody else. Um, and unfortunately, in C++17, you still have to uh, Write it out the long way. See if I can get it to, uh, you still have to write it out the long way with all of these operators. They're great, aren't they? Um, but this is fixed in C20. Um, and so, uh, yeah. So go out and write value types. Um, the resources I'm gonna show you are, or 
I recommend you read are Elements of Programming. Um, the first chapter goes into value semantics far more than I did in 30 minutes. And you can also go to Arn, Arn, I don't know how to say that name, Arnim Mertz's blog, and uh, they will go over move semantics. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Yeah, so if the idea is you n rarely ever want to write any copy constructors, move constructors, or, e oh, sorry, the question was what is the rule of zero, why is the rule of zero the rule of zero? Um, basically, in user code, you really don't ever want to write uh, copy constructors, move constructors, operator equals, you want the language to do all that for you. Um, and there are cases where you are forced to write your own. Um, if you're writing library code, for example, or if you're wrapping a C interface, um, and you should write all of them, basically. And if you don't write any of them, then the language will just do everything for you, which is wonderful. I like being lazy. Any other questions? Cool. Thank you very much.